and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made public a display of them, having triumphed over them, over them through him. The word of God for the people of God. All thanks be to God. You may be seated in his presence. Colossus is a city um, <coughs> comprised of many different peoples. It was on a trade route, so people came through quite often. So what you have there is much like the city of Charlotte, a whole lot of people from different places. When I first moved to Charlotte, it was a long time before I met an actual Charlotte team. Now, I got to know folks because I worked at the housing authority. And so I got to meet a lot of Charlottians as well. <laughs> Amen? Amen. But it, was a, it is because Charlotte is an international place now. Charlotte is a global city. Um, when I started working for the housing authority, I met a lot of people from Charlotte. And then I moved into a position where I was working for the senior nutrition program with DSS. And it happened to be over on Shamrock Drive where most of our seniors were from the international community. We had Russians, we had uh, people from Colombia, not South Carolina, but amen. <laughs> we had people from the Ukraine, all over the world. Then I got a job with the sheriff's office, and I started meeting people from all over the place, all over Charlotte, all over North Carolina, all United States. Either they may have been uh, staff members or inmates because the jail here houses in, um, federal inmates as well. So you could have someone from anywhere. And in being uh, involved in my community, I've noticed even a further growth of people. We have people from everywhere. And the beauty of that is this. If you are open-minded, look at your neighbor and say, if you're open-minded. You have an opportunity to learn of many cultures right where you are. And if that's not enough, I can take out Al's iPad, open it up, put it in, uh, go on Facebook, and I can see some and, and put in somebody's name from across the world. And if we want to, we can hit that little thing where you can talk to people, and I can talk to somebody in Timbuktu. I can talk to someone in Australia. We live in a global community. Yes. And so there are many influences on us. Yes. You know, we like diversity, but diversity means also this. You're going to hear a lot of different things. I happen to have gone to get my master's degree at Emory University. And they pride themselves on being very liberal. Amen? Amen. And, and, and being very liberal, there were people in my class who were atheists, and there were people in my class who were very Pentecostal. There were people in my class who were Baptists. There were people in our class that was Methodist. There were people who were Presbyterian. It was a diversity, and I felt it beautiful. Beautiful in this. I moved beyond my little existence. Yes, I'm an army brat, so we did move around some. But most of my youthful existence was in a little teeny tiny town called Ridge Spring, South Carolina. Not Red Spring. <laughs> Ridge Spring, South Carolina, that falls somewhere between Saluda, Columbia, and Augusta. <laughs> <laughs> My house itself is out in the country in Aiken County towards those two counties. But because of the influence, first of all, of being in a, a military family, we lived in New Mexico and we lived in Virginia. And my father, lived, my father, my older sisters before we were born were in Germany. We have quite an influence in our house, and my parents was open to the idea of making sure that we knew beyond where we were, we had to watch, what was it, it used to come on Sunday, it was a lineup. We had to watch Hee Haw, we had to watch uh, Lawrence Wells, 
And I still will look at that if they show an open on PBS. I don't tell everybody that, but I think I can tell this crap. <laughs> and um, Omaha, Mutual of Omaha, about the animals. Yeah, we, we had to watch that. And then we watched Battlestar Galactica. I don't know why we had to watch that, but we had to. But the point is, my father wanted us to be well-rounded people. While Colossus and the citizens of Charlotte, it is great to be well-rounded. You've got to know your foundation. And you've got to know it so well that when you get introduced to different cultures, <coughs> and different situations, that you remember to stay with God. Amen. That is today's title, Stay With God. <clears throat> One of the things that happened while I was in school is I learned that there are people who call themselves Christians who don't quite believe the way I do. Amen. One of the um, first things that I got was there are people who believe that Jesus didn't come to give his life. That but that we took his life. Come on. Okay. You walk that one out. That says a whole lot of different things. But you see, before I left here, I had a mentor at the church I was attending at that time. And for some reason, she called me and the other, the other young ladies who she was mentoring through the process of becoming a minister. She called us in, our, in her office. And she said, how do you know you're saved? Oh, wow. So the first answer was, I confess with my mouth that I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he died for the remission of my sins and that God raised him from the dead. And I know I'm saved. And she said, okay, how do you know you're saved? That just, the same time I came up. Because I called on the name of Jesus and he heard me and he took me in. Right. And I, yeah, okay, she said, so how do you know you say? Because she didn't hear us the first time. It was eight of us. For three hours, she kept asking us, how do you know you say it? And it went from sitting up nice like y'all are now in the room to laying out on the floor crying. Because we didn't understand, I, 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 I can't even describe what made us get to the place where we were so, I told you already, how do I know I'm saved? Because I'm here. The wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life. I, I'm in eternity. How do you know you're saved? This is what this letter is about. It's about staying with God because see, that mentor knew that we would be going out into a world that would try to take everything away from us. Yes, yes. Isn't that what's happening right now? Yes, yes. We live in a divisive time where either you're all Republican or you're all Democrat. You're all liberal or you're all conservative. You're all this or you're all that. And they're trying to tell you who you are. Yes, yes. And you mess around and hear that long enough and you buy into it. Yes, I'm a liberal. Do you know everything that a liberal is? Do you know everything that a Democrat is? Do you know everything that a Republican is? Do you know? When you don't know, guess what you do know? Stay with God. Live your life according to God. When you fall into one of those core categories on paper, probably so. But the point is, stay with God. They're, they live in Colossus. Does that mean that they have to live according to all these different diversities? No. It's time to decide now. Because see, what the enemy wants to do, to do is divide us. <laughs> divide us. Did y'all see the, the, the black pastors who met with the president? Have you read some of the comments that come behind that? Do you see the division? Do you see the plan of the enemy by having them come? Do you see it? People are so, hey look, I didn't like it. But here's the point. Do I condemn them because they, they went? I'm going to express to them I didn't like it. But is it our job to condemn them? 
Because do you see what the enemy is doing? See, as a Christian, when you stay with God, you'll begin to see over the rhetoric. Right. Come on. You'll see that the enemy is working to divide us. Because I tell people, if it wasn't, if it wasn't the oppressor as we know him now, it would be the oppressor as we would know him another way. You don't believe me? How did the enemy work in our community? Light against dark, long hair against short hair, whatever else, uh, school against unschool. It'll keep going. Because we have to see beyond the actual event to what the enemy is doing. And the only way we get there is if we do what? Stay with God. God is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. There are some things that some Republicans believe that is true. Well, I know you can't believe that. Talk to some. There are some things that Democrats believe that is not true. Now, in terms of the worldly stuff that we have to deal with, because we are to deal with Caesar, with Caesar stuff, right? So you have to choose a side. But don't let the enemy divide you in the wrong way. I'm not telling you which side to be on. I'm telling you, see beyond and stay with God. Yes. Don't let nobody call you something that you're not. Be a Christian at the utmost. Yes. Because even though I may have not have liked that they met with the president, what is it my job to do? It is to pray. And pray that God will lead us all in a way that not only works for us, but for all of his people. And that will call other people in. Because in retrospect, we can see a lot of things in the past. We may find out 10 years ago that there was something about that meeting that actually freed us. What? I don't see it. But we may find out. And wouldn't it be awful if we thrown our brothers away completely because we didn't like what they did. I am not standing up for them. I don't know why they did what they did. But I love a God who is able to do something even if it was wrong. And there's, and there's a scripture in the, in, the, in the word that speaks to all things working together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So even if they had a setup can't God do something with that? Yes. We forget those things when we see it immediately. I did not like it. What are they doing? Yes. But God is able yes. to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond all that we could ever ask or think. So the question becomes in this time of so many pieces, so much diversity in thought and culture, so, such a divisive right. moment. How do we stay with God? Yes, yes. Because you can always say, well, the scriptures say this, but. <laughs> it's easy to put but in there. I need, to, I need to take care of business. But I need to handle this. But I don't know why they met with him. But they don't know he's a liar. But they don't know this is a cheap uh, 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 setup to make them look bad. But. No, it's and. I'm going to get on my knees and ask for the revelation of God concerning his work in the kingdom. Y'all yeah. do know it was God who made Pharaoh's heart Come hard. Come on now. You do know that, right? Come on now. You do know that if we think of God as the creator of everything, he created everything. You do know that there's a purpose in everything. If God allows something, it doesn't mean that's how he wanted to go. But sometimes he's got to leave us to our own mess. Come on, yeah. Come on, yeah. So, in the midst of a diverse time, in the midst of so many cultures coming together, in the midst of so many options, yes. we've got to stay with God. Yes. And in doing so, we got to know how to stay with God. 
So how do we stay with God? How is it that we can stay with God? Oh Lord, I can't miss this before we even find that out. Sometimes the diversity is our own experience. Yes. We've been through some stuff. Personally, you get to look at yourself right now. Personally, you've had some experiences that have made you turn around and not go with God. Amen. Not have the faith that he will bring you through. I'll tell you for myself, I've had it. I went to college. I had a plan. None of that plan worked out. Come on, come on. None of it. Come on now. I'm not a police officer. Amen. That's what I thought I'd be. But actually, if you let's go back a little bit further. I'm not an actress like I thought I would be. I'm not an actress like I thought I would be. I'm not a police officer like I thought I would be. I didn't work in the criminal justice field in the way that I thought I would be working in the field. I never planned on being a minister. Never, 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 ever. I didn't think that at 51 I wouldn't be married. I didn't think I wouldn't have any kids. None of that stuff worked out. So why should I believe that just because I'm getting a doctoral degree that I can do anything with that? Come on, three, come on. That's our old experiences that have a diverse effect upon what God wants to do. Amen. One thing that Al didn't tell you is that it took me an extra year to get my doctorate. You know why? Because my experience said, is it really worth all this? It's too hard. It's working me too much. It's changing my life too much. But I had to stay with God. Amen. Because it's like in the back of my mind, keep going. And what God did is come in and help. Come in. Okay. <laughs> Al and Agnes, who you go see again because she, she's been here, took broke my arm like this. And every time I tried to walk away, do it, Al. <laughs> They were so strong in telling me to stay with God, they wouldn't let me stop. Because I was going to stop. It was going to be over. I got some new information. I had just enough to keep preaching and keep being a minister. But this right here, stay with God that was in the back of my mind. But it was in the front of theirs. Amen. Amen. Stay with God because our own experiences, the diverse effect that it has had on us, can keep us from moving forward in God. But how many of you, how many of you know, just in that song that was just sung, that God has a plan for each one of us yes. to move forward in Him. That's why He says, stay with me. I got you. Stay with God. Yes. So now I can move to how to stay with God. Amen. According to the word that, that, uh, that uh, God has given me in this piece. The first one is Live out the principles that you've been taught in the first place. Amen. What does the Bible say? What does the scripture say now? Lord, have mercy. I say this so that no one will delude you with persuasive argument. For even though I am absent in body, nevertheless I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good discipline and stability of your faith in Christ. Therefore, you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Hey! You already know what to do. Do it. Walk in it. Love one another. Love God with all your heart, your mind, your body, and your soul, and your spirit, and everything you got. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love. Love. Treat others with love. Forgive one another. Do what I've already taught you how to do. Yes. There's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Yes. We know a lot of stuff, but do we do it? No. We know. We know to love each other, but do we show love? Now let me tell you, it's all right to disagree. 
nobody push you to the side. Folks won't even try to make you believe something different. They don't mind if you listen, but they're going to push it upon you. And when they do, they'll see the resistance that is God Almighty himself. When you live God, guess what? The God in you shows up. When you live God, nobody has to ask you if you know the Lord. They'll see it. If your heart is pure, they'll know it. You'll walk into the room and say, oh, this is the one I need to pray with. This is the one I need to talk to. You don't even have to say a word when you live God. When you live what you already know, do you know everything? No, because if we knew everything, why would we need to be saved? It's not just the knowledge, it's the walking in the knowledge of God. It's the sharing of God. God said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. If you live in God, folks don't know it. Every time I see it, she talking about the Lord. <laughs> you will live it if you live him. You can stay with him. Paul says, walk in it, Colossus. Walk in it, Charlotte. Walk in it first, fellowship. Walk it out. Come on now. Walk it out. Yes. I want to do the dance, but I won't do it this time. <laughs> <laughs> Live the life God has taught us in his word. Go from just knowing something to having the wisdom of it. And the only way you can have the wisdom of it is to live it. The second way that you stay with God is decide you will not be deceived. Look at verse 7. Having been firmly rooted and now built up in him. Go down to verse 8. See that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception according to the tradition of men. Right now is a time when they're going around and they're saying it's okay to be gay. Amen. They're saying it's okay to lie. Do you see this fake news piece? Do you see this? I mean, have you ever just, have, I don't know, maybe yeah, some of y'all been living longer than I have. Maybe you've seen lies like you're seeing them now become truths and become okay and become rhetoric when you know it's a flat out lie. Amen. Don't be deceived by philosophy. I'm going to tell you something. One thing about going to Emory is that I learned that people have a good talk for a wrong walk. I try to tell people some of the stuff you hearing on the street, maybe you can kind of say, no, I ain't going with it. But it's some people who have philosophized to the point where they are changing the people who believe to live as unbelievers. And it's not just a little bitty talk. This is folks who are giving you facts the way they want to have them. You know what I'm talking about. Just a flat out lie. And then they trust to tell you, you need to accept it. Because everybody else is. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you not to love folks. I am not telling you to not love people who've made certain decisions in their life that you don't agree with and that you know ain't God. Because if you ever want a hand in them being delivered, you sure better start off loving. Amen. Because people can't hear you if you don't love them. Amen. They won't hear, hear you if, they, if you don't love them. And the deeper they're into something, the more they know whether you love them or not. Isn't that something? <laughs> they live in a life without love, but they can recognize love when love comes. Come on now. You're going to be putting them down and beating them up and treating them wrong and walking around on the side and talking about how wrong they are instead of saying, hey, I love you. Come over here. Let's sit down and have a meal together. No, They're not going to hear you. And the reason why there's so many things that are absolutely wrong are being treated as right is because Christians are not loving people. Come on. God, when Jesus went to Levi's house, mm -hmm. how many of you will even invite someone into your house knowing that
that they're not living of God. And I ain't talking about hanging out all the time. Okay? Amen. You got to know how you, how to keep up. But you sure can't go into it without love. Amen. Amen. You cannot go into it without love. But if you look at the word of God, you see that there's a whole lot of love in there. Yes. That's why you got to stay with God. You got to be determined to not be tricked. You got to decide not to be deceived. See that no one takes you captive. Yes. You got to stay with God in the midst of a time when there's so many diverse and adverse and adversary lies pretending to be truth. Amen. The last piece is remember that in Christ you are victorious. Amen. You see, you won't jump off the team mm -hmm. if you know you're on the winning team. Amen. <laughs> that just don't make sense. I mean, according to American culture, we, we want to be winners. Amen. There's a constant dichotomy that fits into Western civilization. One is a winner and one is a loser. Yes. And sometimes we try to fight it. In our Christian walk, we know we're not in competition. We all have our own path. Amen. Reverend Dr. Al Keenan does not have to fight me for anything because God has a path out in front of him. Amen. God has a path out in front of Reverend Dr. Eileen Maddox that I don't have to compete with anybody to, to get to. Amen. But we still have this peace in Western culture where there's a winner and there's a loser. How many of us want to jump on the losing team? Come on now. <laughs> Let me see. Hmm. Victorious. When we were dead in our transgressions, when we were losers, and the uncircumcision of our flesh, I'm putting our where your is, of our flesh, we weren't circumcised. He hadn't cut anything off of us. We were losers. We were losers. He made us alive together with him. He put us on the winning team. Yes. Having canceled the certificate of debt, debt consisting of decrees against us, everything that was put on us that was bad was removed. We came out what? Looking good and we were winners. He has taken it out of the way. Nailed it to the cross. Yes. He has disarmed rulers and authority and made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him, who is who? Christ. Who's going to jump off the winning team? Come on now. Stay with God. Amen. It's worth it. Amen. Stay with God. Amen. And, and the example of this, Al, the example of this, ladies and gentlemen, is this. There was one who was losing. Uh -huh. There was one who was not doing, not even what the church itself asked him to do. Well. In fact, the church itself decided that this person was wrong in what he was doing. Right. How dare he declare that you were saved? Uh -huh. How dare he declare that he would deliver you? How uh -huh. dare he declare it, but he did it anyway uh -huh. because he was staying with God. Amen. In fact, in three years, Come on now. he stayed Good with God. God. Come on now. His name was Jesus. Come on now. And he suffered because he was staying with God. But he stood. Well, he would not be deceived well, or denied. Come on he now. knew why he was there. Well, and when people said things like his best friend saying, don't go, uh -huh. he said, get behind uh -huh. me, Satan. Uh -huh. right. I'm going to do exactly what I came here to do. Yeah. I'm sorry for the ones yes. who don't believe that Jesus yes. died for them. Right. But I'm quite sure that Jesus came to have, that I might have life right. and have it more abundantly. And that he would die so that I could live. Come on. I am confirmed that he decided he would do just what he was called here to do. Amen. And even more than that, after he died, well. he went to hell, uh -huh. gave up. Oh, did I say gave up? Yeah. No, he took some keys. <laughs> And came back well, and made and gave the keys to me. Well, yeah. Gave them to us. Yes. Why? Because we were the victors. We're the winners. We're the ones who said, hey, Hosanna in the highest every minute. Because he's my God. And he is the one who has.
Tasha? Yes. I just think the message for you today is to stay with God. Well, well, yeah. Yeah. Not to turn left or right. Amen. Let everything you do be ruled by the word of God that is in you. Amen. You sure better read the word of God or you don't know it. Amen. And you'll find yourself on the outside. Amen. Stay with God. Amen. Stay with God. Amen. Stay with God. Amen. Stay with God. Amen. 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 Come on, First Fellowship. We just got a word of confirmation this morning. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because you know there are people that are looking at us cross-eyed. And they're yeah. just trying to figure out why we are doing what we're doing. Why we insist on going outside these walls and being a blessing. In fact, folks have gotten up and said, I don't want to be a part of this because it's different. This is strange. But guess what? This is what God has for us to do. And God sent us an angel. Amen. You know what an angel, the angels means. It means messenger. All right? Sent us a messenger to tell us to stay with God. Here's the thing. I didn't tell what to preach. I told him, you preach whatever God lays on your heart. And that's the message that we got. That's the confirmation that we got. So, first of all, we're going to stay with God. We're going to trust God. We're going to move forward with God. We're going to let God lead us in everything we do. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's do this. Let's